and welcome to our special show, Let's Talk Infertility. I'm Priyanshi Sharma. In our previous show, we spoke extensively about the lack of awareness on what causes infertility and the stigma around open conversations about the silent struggle that couples or individuals face on their road to parenthood. That is the open conversation that we are bringing to you as part of this campaign, Let's Talk Infertility. We are creating awareness and education around infertility and fertility treatments. We are busting myths and talking instead about solutions and support for those who hope to conceive a child. In the second episode of Let's Talk Infertility, we will talk to international experts from the field of reproductive medicine and assisted reproduction technologies about the infrastructure and expertise that's needed in infertility treatments and to understand the science in its finer details. Joining us now on the show are Professor Dr. Human Fatemi, who's the Group Medical Director at Art Fertility Clinics in Abu Dhabi. We also have Ibrahim Al Khatib, the Group Director of Embryology at Art Fertility Clinics in Abu Dhabi. We also have Dr. Luca Gianaroli, the Scientific Director at Italian Society for the Study of Reproductive Medicine. We also have Professor Baris Atta, who is the Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology and a Specialist in Reproductive Medicine at Art Fertility Clinics in Dubai. We also have Dr. Richard Jaktap, who is a Co-Medical Director at Art Fertility Clinics in India. And Dr. Dr. Parul Katyar, who is a co-medical director at Art Fertility Clinics in India. Thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on this special discussion. My first question to you, Professor Fatemi. You are the group medical director of one of the most successful chains of infertility management clinics in the world. What, as per you, makes you as successful as you are? And what should a potential patient look out for while deciding where he or she should get treated? So first of all, thank you for having me and giving me the opportunity of speaking today. Now, it's a very important question that you're asking. I mean, when you want to be successful in the field of reproductive medicine, it is important that we individualize the treatment <clears throat> according to the patient's requirements. You know, we have learned that everyone is different. It's not one size fits all. And we also have learned that, like the old Romans said, life comes from an egg. So we need to understand how we stimulate the patient. We need to individualize the stimulation protocol according to the patient's requirements. We need to synchronize the receptivity of the uterus and the division pattern of an embryo. You know, it's, it's very weird what I'm going to tell you now, but the womb of a woman, the uterus of a woman, is in fact a very hostile place for an embryo to be in. You might say this guy is crazy. He's saying the uterus of a woman is a hostile place. Yes, I'm going to repeat myself. The uterus of a woman is a hostile place to be. Why? Because in a cycle of 28 days, it is only receptive for maybe two to three days. It means if you have an embryo, you need to understand the division pattern of that embryo, and you need to synchronize that embryo with a so-called window of implantation. So the moment we stimulate a woman, obviously we are changing the hormonal levels because in the field of reproductive medicine, we want to have what we call multi-follicular recruitment. So we want to have many follicles growing, but obviously when you have these follicles growing, you change the endocrine profile, you change the hormonal level of the body. And that obviously has an impact on the receptivity of the uterus. Right. So in order to be successful, we try to understand this endocrinology and we try to synchronize the endometrium, the womb, with that particular embryo. Right. And my next question to you, Mr. Khatib, could you tell us how important is embryology in the overall process of infertility treatment? And what does an embryo need to be the best version of itself? So what we believe as um, art fertility clinics is that um, successful results will come from collaborative efforts between the physicians and the embryologists. Why is that? Because the ovarian stimulation, for example, will have an impact on the oocyte quality. And this is the starting material of the IVF lab. So eventually, the, the outcome of stimulation will have an impact on our results. 
And also in the IVF lab, if we provide bad quality embryos, for example, we will not get a successful pregnancy. That's why it's very important to um, understand the importance of this collaborative effort. Now, oocytes and embryos are very sensitive. And for that, they, in order to grow, they require specific, very precise culture conditions, including the culture media, the concentration of amino acids, vitamins, precise temperatures, and gas concentrations. Now, you can have the best equipment in the world, but still you will not be able to make the best outcome. Why? Because not only equipment is required, but also the protocols that you have inside the lab, the um, way you do the calibration. And now in India, for example, all the protocols that are implemented are the sum and the results of decades or more of investigations and research we've done. Mm -hmm. Now we invested also in things that are not necessarily related to the, the, the um, embryo culture or the embryo quality, but also for patient safety. So we implemented also electronic witnessing that works on the RFID technology. So all the biological material from the moment we receive them in the lab until we do the embryo transfer, even if that was done years after we start the cycle, will be tracked electronically. So we avoid all these mismatches. Right. And if I can come to you, Dr. Parul Katyar, next, how do you create awareness around male and female fertility issues when a couple reaches out to you? What kind of capability and capacity do you have to diagnose and treat both male and female infertility in-house within your clinics? Uh, see, when an infertile couple comes to us or to any infertility clinic, they are generally very apprehensive and full of doubts because there is so much of misinformation and this is such a quiet, uh, closed kind of a problem. So the first consultation or whenever the patient walks into our clinic, uh, the initial consultation is generally a very detailed consultation in which we comprehensively discuss not only their previous reports, their medical history, but we also share what is the current treatment uh, for their problems. So this is supportive by a lot of leaflets that we have and we provide to our patients. We also provide them with the current evidence that and as well as uh, which will help in understanding what their problems are and what are the best possible treatments available. So this kind of an open discussion is very helpful because it creates hope for a lot of patients who, who uh, probably felt that they have nowhere to go and they may, might not be able to have a child uh, seeing their problems. In terms of an infrastructure or the capacity building, uh, as is all, uh, already been elaborated by Brahim, uh, we have a very, very good setup. This setup uh, covers, has almost everything uh, for all kinds of infertility services, which includes a very good diagnostic lab, especially to measure the hormones, because hormones have a very big role in infertility as well as management of infertility. We have good latest ultrasound machines, a very good and a well-equipped world-class uh, operation theater, right. which is having one of the best equipments and is also having uh, has uh, things like uh, operating microscope, uh, which can be used to perform advanced procedures like micro uh, which is very helpful for men with azoospermia. And of course, as he has already elaborated, the heart of the program is the embryology lab, uh, which is one of the best in the world. This is all supported and led by a very well experienced team of doctors as well as embryologists, which have helped us achieve one of the best results in India uh, uh, in the such a short time uh, span of time. Right. And while we've talked about treatments, let's now talk about research. Dr. Luca, as we understand, unlike other fields of medicine, reproductive medicine is still at a very young and emerging subspeciality. Now, being less than 50 years old, of course. Now, in this context, how important is the role of research? Do you think that institutions who are heavily invested in it have a natural advantage over doctors who are running individual practices? Definitely, yes. Not only because uh, infertility and reproductive medicine is a young branch of medicine, but also because it's extremely complex. We should never forget that we are treating, uh, uh, we try to treat a disorder of a couple, but in fact, there are two individuals. 
I would prefer to say that infertility itself is not just a disease, but being fertile is a symptom. So let me make it clear. If you have fever, you can have fever for many, many reasons. And you need to know where the problem comes from. So first of all, investigation, and it has been said pre, uh, previously by Dr. Fatemi, personalizing the treatment requires a lot of research, not only from the clinical point of view, but also from the laboratory's point of view. Hmm. So making research is a team effort and is also multidisciplinary work. So only large organizations under uh, the control and the, coordinator, the coordination of uh, very experienced embryologists and clinicians can really lead to do research that are uh, the most influential in our clinical practice. Um, it's interesting to say that uh, when you involve and you explain to patients why they should participate to research, they not only understand very well, but they are very happy to do so. One of our logo, just to give you an idea, has been written from uh, uh, one of our patients, and it says, where, where research is done, more babies are born. And I think this is the truth. My next question is one that I think will be on a lot of minds. Professor Baris, all clinics are seen to be claiming that they have the highest success rate. Could you please tell our viewers what is real success rate and how should it be viewed and what has it been for Art Fertility Clinics Group now for a while now? Okay, thank you. Nice, relevant, complicated question. Um, there are several aspects to this question. One is how is success defined. And so success, the ultimate measure of success in our job is the proportion of couples who go home with a you know, healthy, healthy, healthy child, healthy newborn. And, but it, the chances of every individual couple depends on, you know, at what age they present, what is the underlying reason, and on top of this, what is the ovarian reserve? So these figures are not you know, necessarily applicable to um, every single patient. So ideally, any clinic should be able to present a couple, their own data, their own figures on similar couples. Right? So one of the advantages of being a you know, large group and investing in you know, research infrastructure and electronic medical records is, you know, we are able to calculate our own results for couples presenting with similar conditions. That's one thing. So you, you can give them a realistic estimate. Right. I think that's very important to, to adjust their um, expectations and to, to motivate them to remain in treatment. Secondly, the claims should be ideally corroborated or verified by a third party. In some countries, this is done by the national authorities like the CDC in US or Human Embryology and Fertility Authority in the UK. Where this is not available, um, a competent clinic can get its figures audited by a third party, by, mm -hmm. by, by one of those consulting companies. And as far as I know, uh, our, our figures are audited by third parties. Right, and Mr. Khatib, if I can come to you next, if we can now talk a little about genetic testing. How important is it and what role does it play in a successful IVF treatment? And what makes art fertility clinics different from the rest? That's a very good question, especially that this topic is recently debatable. Now, one of the most common reason for implantation failure or for miscarriages is chromosomal abnormalities, which is referred to as aneuploidies. Now, in order to investigate or to, to point out, find these embryos, we need to do a genetic test called PGTA. And for, if we want to search for a specific disease, we do a test called PGTA. Now, the field of reproductive medicine is a relatively new field of medicine. So imagine how new is the field of reproductive genetics. 
That's why in the past few years, we've seen a lot of improvement and advancement in the technologies available in order to do these tests. Now, the technology available today is very precise, can give a lot of information, and let's say relatively very accurate. The challenge is implementing a PGT program in any IVF clinic is not simple. Why? Because it's not only dependent on the technology used or on the genetic lab, but it's also dependent on the culture conditions, on the way we do the biopsy technique and so on. The protocol we use or the technique we use in the lab, the culture conditions, in the past few years, we heavily investigated this topic. So we have more than 15 publications only in this topic, genetics, embryology and genetics. Why? Because we understand how important it is. This is how we will be able to increase our success rate. This is how we will be able to, I mean, stand out as an organization or a fertility clinic. And besides doing the research in the IVF lab in order to design these protocols, implementing these protocols in our clinics in India, we understood that it's also very important that we ourselves perform the genetic testing in order to cope with all of these advancements, in order to understand more about the field of reproductive genetics. That's why we started our in-house genetic laboratory equipped with the most advanced equipment in new technologies, and of course, we will be coping with all the technologies and tests that will be launched in the near future. Right. And uh, my next question to you, Dr. Richard Jagtap, why is there a need to integrate uh, psychologists and counsellors within individual or parents who are going through IVF treatments? And what is the support that is needed when it comes to going through the cycle of success or failure in uh, trying with an IVF treatment? Thank you for your question and the opportunity. If you have heard all my colleagues talk just now, we have realized one thing for sure that IVF treatment can be a roller coaster ride right? where the patients come with a baggage of years of disappointment when they come and meet us, which means we have to meet them with all the support systems that we can muster up. And that means we have to be able to support them on their thought process, how they are feeling about it, their emotional trauma, and be able to come up with a decision and a clear path ahead for them. There has to always be hope along with the realistic expectations. Most of the times, these patients, when they come and talk to us, they're not able to really express to us as doctors everything that they want to talk about. And there is the role of the counselor in the clinic, which we, in our clinics, we have in-house in counselors in every clinic, can talk to the patient, understand their thought processes, understand their dilemmas, and give them a clarity of thought, give them emotional support, and so that they can continue their fertility journey without any fears. We also have support groups, which will help these patients to kind of understand the process and to be able to be on the same path along with their spouse. So it's not only the woman that we are treating, we are treating a couple. And both of them have to be able to be on the same page along with the clinic and the staff at the clinic. And here is where the counseling team comes as a thread which binds us all together and assures the patient that they are in their best hands, make sure of their emotional and psychological needs while the short treatment is being given by the world-class uh, team of clinicians as well as the embryologists. Right. As you said, it's a roller coaster ride. So this uh, answer was, of course, important for all uh, possible couples to note. Now, for my last question, Professor Fatemi, you are a prolific speaker on the international stage. If you could please tell us what is the future of assisted reproduction technologies and human reproductive medicine? And will clinics with an institutional practice always have a leadership advantage over the others? Today, when, when we put back a genetically normal embryo based on the quality that, of that embryo, the pregnancy rates uh, vary between 70 and 75, sometimes if the quality is A quality, up to 80% per transfer. But still, we are not into 100% of pregnancy. So you would expect you go to a fertility clinic, you have an embryo, and you put back that embryo, and that will lead directly to a pregnancy. But unfortunately, this is not how it's working. So where are we going in order to have a better understanding? I think the year of 2023, not only in the field of human reproduction, globally in the world, 
is and will be the year of artificial intelligence. I think with the artificial intelligence, we are gaining a lot of information. As uh, Dr. Ibrahim mentioned previously, you need to have a holistic approach. Unfortunately, in our field, everyone is looking to one direction. So when you ask me where are we going, I think two points are extremely important. First of all, to synchronize and have a more holistic approach. And I think, secondly, AI will play a major role. And hopefully, at some point, we can go to the 100% pregnancy rate. That means you put back an embryo and you end up with a healthy child. Right. Well, thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on that discussion and answering those very important questions. We hope it helped our viewers. And as we said earlier, over the next few weeks, we will be answering all your questions about infertility. What causes it, how to treat it, and much more through our shows and through our website. You can visit our website, ndtv.com slash let's talk infertility for more information. And you can also leave us your questions, which will be answered by specialists from Art Fertility Clinic over our next few shows. To end the show, let's hear from couples for whom IVF has worked as a solution. I'm a person being new and she was like, you know, you just have to trust Dr. Jaja blindly uh, and just do what she says. And she told me with so much of conviction that I had to believe her. And then we just followed the procedure that Dr. Jaja said like blindly. And yeah, I think the faith in the doctor is the most important thing in this entire process. Uh, and also the support of the staff or the nursing staff, very cooperative, guided me a lot. There was there was there were sisters who were guiding me how to take the injections right and what amount and what time. There were constant supervision throughout the uh, every step of the process.